We invite you to join us as we celebrate the church launch of Miracle Healing Center in McKinney, Texas on Sunday, May 21st at 10 a.m. Featuring Pastor Sean and Amy Pender with special music by Alvin Slaughter. We welcome people of all ages and backgrounds to come and experience God's love and power, as well as join us as we fulfill the Great Commission, preaching the gospel to the lost and demonstrating God's power. Celebrate with us at the Cockrell Middle School in McKinney. See you there. God is a good God. Sing it with me this morning. Because He is a great God. He can do anything. But fail, he has moved so many mountains out of my way. Cause God is a wonderful God. Sing it to the king. God is a good God. He is a great God. He can do anything but fail he has moved so many mountains out of my way God is a wonderful Father God me and Pastor Amy join our faith again with your wonderful people give them as to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Lord, you said sternly, my sheep know my voice. Lord, you also said man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Let the word of God come alive to your people. Give them a spirit of revelation, wisdom, and understanding. God, I pray the Holy Spirit would make the Word of God so sweet and so simple that even a child would be able to understand what the Holy Ghost is saying to the church. In Jesus' name we pray. Someone say, Amen. Praise God. We serve a good God. Good morning to you, saints of the Most High God. So good to be back with you again on this morning for another fresh morning prayer broadcast and on this morning we are talking about your receiving double for your trouble everything you go through is not in vain nothing is going to be wasted that's why the Bible says and we know Romans 8 28 and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God even to them that are called according to his purpose. I want to take you into the book of James, chapter 5, verse 11, as we really, I really want to take my time and teach these scriptures to you because it's so important. James says, behold, we count them happy which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. In other words, you may see someone going through a serious trial and a struggle, and it even hurts your heart, it overwhelms you when you see what some people have to go through. But James said, you've seen the patience, you've heard the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord. In other words, at the end of the situation, whatever someone's going through, God's going to bring them out better. Come on, somebody. I say God is going to bring them out better, and it couldn't be more true than in the life of a man by the name of Job. And we know what happened in the book of Job, chapter 1. I'm going to summarize this because I'm really focusing on the end of the book. In Job chapter 1, God approached the devil and said, have you? considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in all the earth. God was actually bragging on this man. The devil said, ah, does Job serve God for nothing? The devil said, I can't even reach him. I can't even touch the insects on the man property. I can't even harm a fly <laughs> because you got a hedge of protection around Job and 
all that he has is protected. Ah, but if you move that protection, let me, let me, let me jack him up for a minute. I bet he'll curse you to your face. Now, this proves the stupidity of the devil. Anybody who is going to go into the face of God and tell God you're going to prove God wrong, that shows how dumb you can be. Come on, somebody. I can't give, I can't let, can't give him no slack here. You got to be a fool to challenge God. When have God ever been wrong? When have God ever lost a battle? Are you listening to me? Let me ask you something. Can God brag on you? Can God trust you with trouble? You going through something right now? I'm here to tell you God's been bragging on you. God's been proud of you. As soon as the clouds, as soon as John the Baptist baptized Jesus in the book of Matthew 3, when he brought Jesus up out of the water, the heavens was open. The Spirit of God descended on him like a dove, and the voice of God came from out of heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. God was bragging on him. No sooner God bragged on Jesus, you go into chapter 4, here comes the devil with all of his temptations. Satan didn't let up off of Christ for six weeks, 40 days and 40 nights. Five and a half weeks, almost six weeks. So when, when you see the enemies coming against you, it's not because of who you are. It's because of whose you are. You belong to Jesus. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost lives in you. You are standing on the promises of God. The Apostle Paul said to the Hebrews, after you were enlightened, after you received revelation knowledge, you endured a great fight of affliction. When you come into revelation knowledge, when you get saved, all hell will break loose in your life. So James said, you knew what God did for Job. Job lost all of his children. He lost all of his cattle. He almost lost all of his employees. I mean, he went from plus to minus. He went from abundance to lack. He went from being the head to being the tail. He went from being above only to being beneath. He suffered and then Satan attacked his body with boils to the point that his, wife, his wife said, do you still serve God? Curse him and die. Job said, you speak as one of the foolish women. What shall I receive good at the hand of God? And evil is in common with it. That means whenever God bless you, here comes the enemy to attack. But who knows that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. You got to hang in there. So after Job went through his trouble, and to make matters worse, Job's own friends, his three closest friends, begin to falsely accuse Job and say, you going through this because you have sin in your life. Something's wrong with you. My Bible, well, listen to me. Well, you know Jesus proved them real wrong because nothing was wrong with Jesus. We saw what Jesus went through, and he was perfect. He was without sin. Job was perfect. Job avoided evil, and he went through the fire. But at the end of the day, I want to get to the end of the book here. Lord, help us, Jesus. I dare someone lift your hands to heaven, prophesy over your situation. Say, I'm receiving double for my trouble. I'm receiving, type below this video, I'm receiving double for my trouble. In fact, send this video out to five of your friends. Share this video with five of your friends. This is going to bless them. You know somebody that's going through. You know someone that want to give up on God. You know, someone's who's, you know someone whose faith is real weak right now. Share this video with them. Do it right now. Watch this. Job chapter 42, beginning at verse 7. Job 42, beginning at verse 7. Listen to what the Bible says. And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words to Job, because Job started repenting in the end, because he realized, Job said, man, I spoke of things I didn't understand. He humbled himself, and he repented. After 
the Lord had spoken these words unto Job. The Lord said to Eliphaz, the Temanite, my wrath is kindled against thee and against your two friends, for you have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job hath. They falsely accused Job. They tore him down. Who need an enemy when you got friends like that? I heard a pastor call them frenemy. <laughs> frenemy. You got it? Friend and enemy all wrapped in one. <laughs> I'm like, that's a good one. I'm going to borrow that. Now watch this. Therefore, this is God talking to Job's friends, rebuking them because they had falsely accused him and judged him wrongfully. Therefore, take unto you now. This is God talking to them. No way. Take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And watch this. And my servant Job shall pray for you, for him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly, your foolishness, in that you have not spoken to me the thing which is right like my servant Job. God rebuked his friends. You don't have to try straighten everybody out. God himself will defend you. God will straighten some of those people out who falsely accuse you and judge you wrong. So Eliphaz the Temanite and Bildad the Shuhite and Zophar the Namathite went and did according as the Lord commanded them. The Lord also accepted Job. That meant he prayed for his friends. He prayed for them. Watch this now. I want you to see how crucial this word was. Verse 10 says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. God turned Job's situation around when he prayed for his friends. That meant Job had to forgive them from his heart. And as soon as Job forgave them, the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. I dare someone to say, I'm receiving double for my trouble. For the hell I went through for 55 days, you bet I'm coming out with something. I'm receiving double for my trouble in the name of Jesus. God gave Job twice as much as what he had before. Come on, I dare some, someone type below this video, double, double, double. I'm headed for double. I'm headed for increase. I'm headed for more. Jesus said, I've come that you can have life and have it more. But before he was able to entrust you with more, he had to put you in the fire. You had to go through something. You had to be tested. You had to be tried. Job said he knows the way that I take. That when he try me, I'm coming forth as your gold. Watch this. Then there came unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. God allowed him to go through it. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and everyone an earring of gold. They gave to Job. They blessed him. They stood with Job. They were so impressed at what God, how God had delivered him and brought him out. Everybody said, I got to bless Job. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep. He started with 7,000 sheep. After the test, now he got 14,000 and 6,000 camels. Before his test, he had 3,000. After the test, 6,000 and 1,000 yoke of oxen. He had 500 before the test. After the test, 1,000. I'm telling you, double. Someone shout double, 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 double. Type below the video. Double, 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 double. Type the word seven times for me. And a thousand she donkeys. He had 500 before he went through the fire. After he went through his fiery tests, his fiery trial, and came out as pure gold, now he have a thousand donkeys. I'm telling you, double for your trouble. 
double, double, double in the name of Jesus. You coming out with more. You coming out with increase. You coming out the head and not the tail. You coming out healed like me and not sick. You coming out with abundance and not lack. You coming out above only and not beneath. You coming out being the lender and not the borrower. In the name of Jesus. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. He had also seven sons and three daughters. God gave him seven more sons and three more daughters. Because all the first seven sons and three daughters, which were ten children, they all died. Now God gave him a second set, which end up meaning he had double because the first ten went into heaven. Come on, somebody. I dare someone to say double. Verse 14, and he called the name of the first Jemima and the name of the second Kezia and the name of the third Karen Hapa. And, and in all the land where no woman found so fair or beautiful as the daughters of Job and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. After this, Job, after this lived Job 140 years and saw his sons and his son's sons even four generations. So Job died being old and full of yes. Someone lift your hands to heaven and say, God ain't through blessing me. God ain't through. He ain't through all my life you have been faithful. In all my life you have been faithful. Come on, sing it with me, church. In all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will see of the goodness of God your goodness is running after me sing it with me church your goodness is running after it's running after me come on sing it your goodness is running after it's running after me with my life laid down I'm surrendered now I give you everything your goodness listen you're gonna be all right we all go through the fire we all are tested we all are tried but Job said he knows the way that I take that when I come out of this, I'm coming out, I'm coming out as pure gold. I'm coming out as pure gold. I could see some men and women watching this broadcast who are ready to surrender their lives to Jesus. You said, I'm tired of my own way, Pastor Sean. I'm ready to surrender. Listen. In reverence to God, I want you to bow your head and pray with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I'm asking you to forgive me of all of my sins and wash me in your blood. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on Calvary Cross for me. They buried you in a borrowed tomb, but on the third day God raised you from the dead. You are now seated at God's right hand. And soon and very soon, you are coming again. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. Friends, if you prayed that prayer and meant it with all of your heart, let me and Pastor Amy be the first to welcome you into the family of God, into the kingdom of God. Your sins have been forgiven. I want you to type below this video right now. I've just surrendered my life to Jesus. I want you to type below this video right now without any hesitation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Listen, remember we are still asking you to support phase two, which is purchasing the equipment for small children. Amen. That's a portable nursery equipment, portable pre-K equipment, 
and for elementary, where kids can come and learn about Jesus in our Sunday morning services as we launch May the 21st. Uh, I'm telling you, we are so excited. We are thrilled that God opened the door for us. I know some of you can do it. This is for the kingdom of God. This is for the gospel of the Lord Jesus. This is so we can fulfill the Great Commission and make disciples. To give in this offering, visit us online right now. SeanPinder.net forward slash give. If you have the ministry app on your phone, give through that ministry app. Select give and give them out. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. The ministry cash app address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also mail your donations to the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas 75070. Never forget me and my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy. We love you. We appreciate you. And we look forward to seeing you again on tomorrow as we continue the series, God is a Good God.